Hello and welcome to the Red Feather Genealogy channel. Uh, we're going to discuss whether or not you are Cherokee because so many people believe that they are Cherokee or that grandma was a Cherokee, something along those lines. It's a very prevalent uh, borderline American mythology and we're going to have a look at it starting with this great big map of all the Indian nations. A uh, great many of them here, but for some reason it's all about the Cherokee specifically in most cases. So, the background of the Cherokee, they started out more or less in this area, depending on which map you look at, but generally at this intersection of modern states uh, with the Trail of Tears, they were shunted off to the west into Oklahoma. And Oklahoma is where a lot of people who believe that they have Cherokee backgrounds come from. Well, this all seems to be very hand in glove, right? In fact, there are Cherokee rolls that indicate that people are Cherokee. Well, it's more like Cherokee in quotes. Because the DNA is starting to come in from these people and, uh, well, this is an absolutely perfect example. This is the ethnicity of someone who tested through 23andMe, in part looking to see how much of their theoretical Indian ancestry was real. Well, blue is European. This person is very, very white. 99% white. However, there are noticeable bits and pieces of not white. Got a little bit of purple for Africa. A little bit of orange for Asia, although a lot of Far Eastern Asia is mixed up with Indians a lot, so this could very easily be more Indians. But here's the money. The big yellow stretch here is actual Amerindians. The stretch of DNA is actually a bit less than 0.8%, but is more than most with an Indian background yet. As often as not, the Indians turn out to be Africans. The question therefore is, why are so many people from supposed Cherokee backgrounds turning out to be just Europeans, bits and pieces of others? Well, we first go back in time a bit to a group known as the Scots-Irish. To make a long story short, as England and Scotland were growing closer together through the crown and through the eventual union of 1707, they wanted to get rid of the troublemakers in the borderlands on either side of the border of, well, not even the border so much as just uh, the line between the countries, we'll say. And so they wanted to kill two birds with one stone. They wanted to get rid of these people and they wanted to dump a bunch of nasty Protestants onto the troublesome Catholic Irish. And so, essentially, this is where Northern Ireland comes from, why they're Protestant. The rest of Ireland is Irish Catholic. These people, of course, did not actually cooperate with this program, and they made the jump to the American colonies. Since the seaboard was generally taken, they ran off into the Appalachian Mountains, into the backwoods, and kind of the rest is history. Uh, NASCAR, country music, whiskey, the whole thing, this is the Scots-Irish legacy. This is a spectacular map of American demographics over the centuries and how they've all panned out. Uh, another long story short is Greater Appalachia, the red zone here, is the Scots-Irish. As you can see, it starts more or less at the Appalachian Mountains and works westward. So basically the stretch from the mountains in Virginia through to Texas and Oklahoma, well, that would be the Scots-Irish. Now referring back to the Cherokee map, you notice a very similar path. So they're moving in parallel, very literally, actually. But DNA is proving that they're actually white with traces of African and Indians. Traces that go back to even before the pre-revolution Scots-Irish migrations. So, for these little slivers, we have to go back further in time yet, and that means going to Tidewater, Virginia. And what that means is Jamestown. So this is back, 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 back. Jamestown was essentially set up as a dumping ground for uh, the people that England didn't like. 
which <laughs> could qualify as pretty much anybody. Uh, they would round people up just by hook or by crook, and they would dump them off into the colony, uh, hopefully to look for gold and then to cultivate tobacco. And this meant rounding up street urchins, uh, anybody with a criminal record, just all kinds of refuse would just get dumped off into the colonies. Again, this was another scheme of killing two birds with one stone. Often enough, this took the form of indentured servitude, where you would be given a contract where you would work for seven years to pay off the housing and shipping that got you there, and then you could get your own land. Usually this actually translated into just an early death. It was nasty there, a lot of people died, a lot of Indian attacks, uh, things just didn't exactly pan out. Also, as we all know, the slaves from Africa began to get shipped in. In the beginning, uh, blacks and whites had much more equal rights than would later be known in this region, and there was a lot of intermingling, a lot of intermarriage, and so you had more of a mixed population than a lot of people would realize, and this is what's being borne out in the DNA now. The thing is, you had a lot of people who really didn't want to be there, and taking their chances in the mountains and in the Indian country was looking a whole lot better than dealing with Jamestown and the plantations around there, especially as the segregation laws began to take effect. So off to the mountains they went, and to bring up this map again to reiterate, everything was Indian country. So you had kind of a mix of everybody who was showing up going back there. This is where the term Melungeon comes in. I actually learned this term very recently myself, but this is the core of all of the mixing that led to the future Cherokee myths, I'll say. Melungeon is a term traditionally applied to one of numerous tri-racial isolate groups of the southeastern United States. Historically, Melungeons were associated with the Cumberland Gap area of central Appalachia, which includes portions of East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, and Eastern Kentucky. Triracial describes populations thought to be of mixed European, African, and Native American ancestry. Although there is no consensus on how many such groups exist, estimates range as high as 200. Melungeons were all often referred to by other settlers as Turks, Moors, or Portuguese on account of their swarthier complexion. So this being the Cumberland Gap, this was essentially the ticket through the mountains. This is the breakthrough to the west. In fact, this was put on a coin not too long ago. In spite of being culturally and linguistically similar to their European neighbors, these multiracial families were of a sufficiently different physical appearance to provoke speculation as to their identity and origins. In the first half of the 19th century, the pejorative term Melungeon began to be applied to these families by neighbors. Local, quote, knowledge, or myths, soon began to arise about these people who lived in the hills of eastern Tennessee. The earliest of these was that they were, quote, Indian, more specifically, Cherokee. So this goes quite far back. Few ancestors may have been of mixed Iberian and African origin. Some early slaves and free blacks of the chartered generation in the colonies were Atlantic Creoles, mixed-race descendants of Iberian workers and African women in slave ports in Africa. Their male descendants grew up bilingual and accompanied Europeans as workers or slaves. The majority of Melungeon early ancestors who had migrated from Virginia over time are Northern European and African, given the history of settlement in late 17th, early 18th century Eastern Virginia. Later generations in Tennessee intermarried with descendants of Scots Irish immigrants, we just talked about them, who arrived in the mid to late 18th century and settled in the backcountry before the American Revolution. Given historical evidence of Native American settlement patterns, Cherokee Nation descent is highly unlikely for the original Melungeon ancestral families who were formed during the colonial area in the Virginia Tidewater areas, which were not Cherokee territory. Some of their descendants may have later intermarried with isolated individuals of Cherokee or other Native American ancestry in East Tennessee. Melungeons in Graysville, Tennessee claimed Cherokee ancestors. 
Anthropologist Evans wrote regarding these claims. In Graysville, the Melungeons strongly deny their black heritage and explain their genetic differences by claiming to have had Cherokee grandmothers. Many of the local whites also claim Cherokee ancestry and appear to accept the Melungeon claim. Does this sound familiar? Grandma was an Indian, so we've circled back to the beginning here. DNA is proving something more like grandma's 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 grandma was probably black and or maybe Indian and more likely a Virginia tribe than Cherokee. So to reiterate, here they are in the DNA. There's Africa. There's some Indian. And here's a photo of one of these old mixed families. In fact, I have some of this in my own ancestry despite being entirely white, so this affects a lot of us, believe me. So this is where all of this, this was kind of the ground zero, was this stretch from Tidewater, Virginia, by the coast, stretching over toward Kentucky, essentially is ground zero for where a lot of this mixing came from and where the stories began. And here we have it, moving further over toward Oklahoma and Texas. So yeah. They all ended up in the same place in Oklahoma in many cases, and then they spread out from there, but this is the long and the short of how Cherokee you are or aren't, because ultimately I'd have to go with aren't, honestly. On a side note, a lot of people really freak out about this. They say, well, this can't happen to me. I'm on the Indian rolls. The rolls have nothing to do with DNA. A lot of white people uh, just got on the rolls because they wanted government money. It's really that simple. I've also seen people take these tests and get these results. Uh, you see a lot of examples in DNA forms, but I actually have a friend of a friend who came back 1% black and they just flipped out. They couldn't believe it. Oh, the DNA must be all wrong and they never logged it again. But the truth is the truth. We did a lot of mixing back there and it made its way to Oklahoma. So you got Cherokees and quote Cherokees all mixed together. <laughs> and that's America for you. So... Anyway, thanks for listening, and please do subscribe, and I'll be back with more videos soon.